Hi folks, and you've been asking for this video for some time now. So I'm going to talk about internet access in the van. Um, Wi-Fi, um, you know, router, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go through the whole thing. This video is sponsored by XL Hosting. If you're looking for a domain name, web hosting, or amazing email, go to xlhosting.uk and sign up today. So the first thing I want to talk about is why you can't get a phone or cell repeater for inside your van. Um, so that you can just carry on using your phone and share the internet from your phone instead of having a separate device, a Wi-Fi router or a hotspot or a dongle so you can get your essential internet and all your connectivity that way. Um, and that comes down to laws, basically. Um, in America, they're allowed to carry around mobile cell repeaters. Um, in UK and Europe, um, it's against the law. And that's ultimately it in a nutshell really so that means when you're inside your van and say it's at night time you've got all your blinds down and everything else you're going to really struggle to get a connection on your phone and therefore you need an antenna outside the van and you can do this via two sort of light types you can go extreme which is one i've gone uh, which is a full um, omnidirectional 5 4 and 3g antenna up on the roof way up above everything else up on the roof uh, to get me as much of a signal as I can wherever I am. Um, the other way is you can get a puck antenna, which is what Mandy's got on her van, just so that if you're inside your van and you're struggling with that connectivity because you've got your blinds down or whatever, ultimately you're in a metal box and most blinds are backed by sort of, um, you know, foil or something like that. So you create um, a, a signal block box called a Faraday cage when you're inside your van with all the blinds down, which is why you struggle. So having an external antenna really helps. Uh, the puck antenna Mandy's got is connected to a Wi-Fi router um, and that gets around that problem. Um, it does get her a signal because the antenna's on the outside, the top of a van, so it works well. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is what's the best setup and how is it gonna work for you and manage your expectations as well because I've spoken about this in the past and people have said, oh, my antenna doesn't get me a better signal than I get inside the van, so what's the point? Um, the point is, the further away you get from cell towers or masts or, you know, whatever you want to call it, broadcast towers, um, the further away from them you get, the weaker the signal. Uh, the weaker the signal, the better your chances of getting a signal still if you've got a roof-mounted antenna. But if you're in a town centre, city centre, you'll probably find that your phone will receive the best signal and the best internet speeds, um, even more so than um, something that's mounted on the roof. It's a close call on upload speeds though. I found that my phone will beat the download speeds no matter where I am, um, if I'm in a town centre, because of that technology difference between a brand new iPhone 14 and a not so brand new uh, Wi-Fi setup that I've got in my van. So in those circumstances, I can download stuff on my phone and my phone works fine. However, uh, sometimes I will find that whilst my download is okay, if I then switch over to the van Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi of the van and its antenna outside gets a better upload speed. And that's because that antenna on the roof um, is basically, I suppose it's tuned to get um, the smoothest, the steadiest and the strongest signal. Um, and therefore the internet speed runs better because it's not jumping up and down with a patchy signal or anything else. So just wanted to work that one out for you guys as well, that um, if you do get this set up, either the puck antenna or the antenna, I've got the pointing 5G antenna, and you're using it in quite um, urban areas, um, don't expect it to get a better signal than you're getting or a faster speed download speed than you're getting but you may find that it'll get a faster upload speed but predominantly when I'm in rural locations um, and like I said we've been out with friends in the middle of Scotland and all sorts of weird and wonderful wild places uh, where everybody shared with the Wi-Fi on my van because I'm the only one that's got a signal and that's why this system um, is pretty much what I'm saying is the best system I've tested over four years of doing this uh, to get a signal no matter where I am. So now that I've explained the different scenarios about why this system is useful, the different systems, whichever way you want to use it, I'm going to explain more about the exact items I've got um, and how it all works. 
Um, what I do want to start off with is that is state that the network um, that we use is EE. Um, and that is predominantly from, like I say, four years of traveling around not only the UK, um, but uh, pretty much most of Europe over to Turkey, over to the very edge of Turkey where you're kind of, uh, you know, you're touching on Georgia and Iran and Iraq and all that kind of stuff. Um, and what we found is that EE gives the best overall service. Now, I'm not saying that it's flawless. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, there's been a couple of occasions where other people have come and joined us at a location and my signal's been a bit meh. I'm coping with it, but it's meh. And they've had roughly the same setup as me, uh, but with a three sim and that's worked fine. So what I'm saying to you is EE overall is the best quality, the best speeds uh, with the most dependable network. However, if you want to carry around some pay-as-you-go SIM cards, then yeah, get a, a gift gaff for O2, um, something like a Smarty SIM card or something like that um, for three, uh, as well as your EE, and then you're pretty much going to get a decent coverage then. Um, no matter where you've been, you're probably going to be all right if you want to do it that way. Um, but for me, I've just left my EE SIM card in there, and that's it. Um, I have an EE contract with my normal phone, um, and from that, I've been able to get additional SIMs on my account. Fair enough, the SIM cards I get are regular phone SIM cards. They're not data-only SIM cards. Data-only SIM cards, I've no idea why people buy them. They're more expensive and they give you the same stuff, really. There is no difference. So I've gone for um, a SIM-only package, which gives me unlimited data, unlimited calls and everything else. Not that I use it for anything, but the SIM card then gone straight into my router. Uh, and that's been flawless and it's about £22.50 a month which means that in the van wherever I am um, I can get Wi-Fi and it's all included in that price. I have tried many 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 different types of routers including 5G routers and what I found with 5G that is as you move around it creates problems for the router. It's great if you're static for a few days but as you're driving around the router is trying to switch between 4G, 5G, and it loses connectivity and it basically messes up. One of the routers, a ZTE router I was testing, actually powered off as the cell towers tried to switch between 5G. Um, basically, 5G is a stronger signal, but only in a more local area because of the frequencies it's working at. So you need more cell towers for 5G. Um, that's basically how it works. So the routers have to switch more often as you're driving around to keep that 5G connection. And from all the 5G routers I found, they didn't cope very well at all with that. If you're in one location, yep, that's fine. But as you move around and move the router around, yeah. Um, and the other thing that I found as well is that 5G generally wasn't getting me that much better of a service than 4G well, slash 4G plus. So after probably about six months of testing five different types of 5G routers, um, I just bin that and I went back to the original router I've got, which is a Netgear M2, which is a 4G router, does 4G plus as well. And that gets me the most reliable connection, 4G or 3G. Um, and now we're in Europe at the moment. It allows me to swap between networks and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, it's unlocked, so it works on any network. And more importantly, you can have multiple devices connecting to it. So this one supports up to 16 devices, including you can plug a network port in, uh, which means you can have a hub as well. Um, so if you've got devices that actually need a physical, um, you know, Cat5 or Cat6 network cable, you can plug that into this router as well. And more importantly, it's got external antenna connections as well. So it means that I can then have my router inside, connect the antenna up on the roof, and then that gets the best signal no matter where I am. Um, I do leave the antennas connected permanently. I've made a little pouch for it to sit in, if you like, where the antennas are permanently connected and so is the power. Uh, without the power being connected, obviously you've probably got about a day, something like that, um, before it'll need to be recharged. And I've not successfully managed to pull the battery out and keep it charged it runs into all sorts of issues if you do it that way some people say it works that way but i've not found it work that way at all so like i say the next thing we're going to talk about is the antenna on the roof and that is the pointing 5g 
4G, 3G. So those are my two major components of my network. Um, my Wi-Fi system in my van is the Netgear M2 router um, and the pointing 5G, 4G, 3G um, antenna, omnidirectional antenna as well. And why might you want Wi-Fi in your van? Um, well, if you've got the Echo devices, well, say the A-L-E-X word, because that upsets people that did that in a previous video, and apparently everyone's devices were shouting off, so I won't say that. Um, but yeah, if you've got one of those devices, it means you can stream music, you can call people from it. Um, but a lot of people now are using those Blink cameras. I tried the Blink cameras of my outside CCTV, um, and I don't rate them, in all fairness. Um, not only does it take quite a few seconds for you to connect to each camera, and if you've got an Echo Show, um, you can use the Echo Show um, to actually say, look at this camera, look at that camera. But it can take like 15, 20 seconds. Bear in mind, you've always then got to have an internet connection to do that as well. Even if you use the app on your phone, you've always got to go out to the internet that then comes back to view your Blink camera. Um, you can get outer hard cases, which help weather seal them. Um, I tried a couple of them, but I still found that they got pretty much clogged up over winter with snow and ice. As soon as you get moisture in there and they freeze, you can't really see anything out of the lens, um, which is an unfortunate thing. Obviously in the summer, they'll be better. Um, but then the other thing that they really struggle for is the ability to see what's going on around you at night. Um, so much so uh, that you'd need quite well lit areas to see things outside at night because their infrared sort of um, capabilities are pretty naff really. You could get 12 volt infrared floodlights, do it that way, um, but then you've got to wire things to the top of your van so you can see, in which case you might as well get a wired CCTV system. Um, and that is going to be a feature on a very um, soon upcoming video, uh, which is talking about my CCTV and how it's wired in and everything else. But to go back, why else you might need Wi-Fi in your van? Internal cameras as well. So we've got these old NEOS cameras, but the same sort of concept is with the Blink cameras. You could have them inside your van. You don't need to wire them. Uh, you can activate them and arm them as you leave. So it's only at that point they start recording or you know keeping information that's been sort of you know going on. So you want to remotely view them, or if you do have problems around your van, you want as uh, you know, a, a recording of whatever event happened, some breaking or someone damaging your van, you want that going up to the internet, up to the cloud and storing on the cloud, just in case your van is stolen or someone breaks in and steals the camera, at least with the Wi-Fi setup, uh, that's been recorded outside of your van as well as inside of your van, so you've got that. Um, I can remotely record the temperatures and if you've got such a system that you can uh, view your batteries and solar um, you can remotely view that outside as well. So I can see on my app how much solar I'm getting and what the status of my battery charge is or the status of charge of my batteries um, whilst I'm away from my van uh, due to the internet as well. Uh, many other things as well it means obviously ultimate loads of different Wi-Fi devices your phone your tablet uh, your laptop, um, streaming music from other devices. So we've got a nice little Bluetooth speaker, which is also a Wi-Fi speaker, uh, which you can stream Wi-Fi things from. There are many other reasons why you might want Wi-Fi in your van, um, but predominantly um, it's to do with me working online, um, wanting to see what happens to my van when I'm not around. And ultimately it's far easier than messing around with trying to share off my phone all the time. Um, so that's why I've got a Wi-Fi set up in my van. It does cost a fair bit of money, but it's not that much. The antenna is about £100 and the router is about £250, £300. Um, obviously you can get them used or new, depends which way you want to go. Make sure you do get an unlocked one if you want to swap around the cards. Um, but ultimately there are companies out there for motorhome Wi-Fi systems um, that do make this sort of kit themselves and sell it on, but it does the same job. I just put together my own system because, well, I can, and I wanted a choice about what systems I wanted to use and the antenna and how I mounted it, uh, rather than going to a company that ultimately chose for me and then just said, there you go, you've still got to fit it yourself. Uh, just to make sure a couple of things are clear as well, with the puck antenna, 
Uh, that is literally surface mounted to your van. You drill a hole through the roof, you pass the cables and thread through, and then you screw it from the other side and it self seals against the roof of your van. And that's what Mandy's got installed. It's nice and low profile. No one can see it from the outside and still gives you the option of getting a signal, you know, when you're inside your van and perhaps your phone's got no signal. The antenna I've got, I would suggest you mount that as high as you possibly can from anything else on your roof certainly any metallic objects or anything else that might you know sort of um i suppose get in its line of sight it's it's omnidirectional so it is trying to get a signal all the way around um but if you put it in front of like a, a max fan and the max fans up full and then the signal's coming from this way from the cell tower you, you're gonna block that signal unfortunately uh, so i've made sure mine is up on the roof um, high enough that even with my max fan up um, it's still over the top and there's a little extra piece of information as well. Don't mount the antenna so that it will cast a shadow over your solar panels. Otherwise you might end up with a bit of an issue where you've got good signal, but you've not got good solar. So any bit of shadow over your solar panel is going to decrease your solar panel um, charge capabilities. And you don't really want to do that. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, hope I've answered lots of your questions out there about um, you know, why you just can't boost the signal for your phone or why you just can't share this or what network do you use? What devices do we use? What antenna do you use? Um, and in which certain scenarios um, where it works best or not. Um, if you've got any further questions, ask in the comment section down below and um, yeah, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. <music>